Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. Uh, so I've done a few video blogs talking about my, uh, my new low fat diet that I've been on now for uh, four weeks. And as I mentioned in the videos that I've done to date, I started doing this. Uh, I was recommended to do this by a dietitian. She gave me like a few meals to eat per day. Uh, but beyond that, it was kind of had to like figure out a lot of stuff myself. So what I thought I would do for today's video as a non-nutritionist, non-dietitian, somebody doing the low fat diet, is to take us on a virtual shop. I'm gonna go on to tesco.ie, which is a uh, Irish shopping online supermarket. It's a supermarket that has an online you know, shopping functionality. The reason I'm doing tesco.ie is because uh, I do live in Israel, but here are online shopping systems. They do exist, but they are in Hebrew. And I think most people subscribing to my videos because I titled them in English are uh, gonna be confused by not English. So. Uh, that's why I'm doing Tesco.ie and what I want to do here is I'm just going to show you guys in the space of a month because I have spent so, so much time over the past month shopping, reading nutritional labels, researching in order to start a low-fat diet. And I've actually been really, really strict about this low-fat diet. Um, I'm doing it because I had gallbladder surgery two years ago created a lot of digestive problems, was very unpleasant. And uh, low fat diet, the first thing I found is it, this has been a major breakthrough for me. Uh, that's actually really helped. Uh, as well as ox bile, which is a supplement. But uh, let's keep the video about the low fat diet. So I'm just gonna show you guys, it's an art of buying low fat food in the supermarket because uh, there's a lot of stuff that you think is low fat that turns out not to be low fat. There's a lot of stuff that you think is high fat that turns out to be uh, actually not so bad uh, or low in fat and it's a, it's a specific diet. It's a diet that's definitely fallen out of favor in the nutritional world it seems, even though a lot of national health authorities recommend it. Uh, just to clarify one more time, this is not nutritional advice, I'm just showing you guys um, what, from the skeleton information I was told, which is what the percentages are for what's considered low fat, what I've been able to find in a supermarket that fits within that paradigm so it's not nutritional advice everyone's got their own nutritional thing but if you're also doing a low-fat diet uh, i just thought this information might be useful to someone hence i am putting it up on the net so without further ado let's go on to uh let's begin our voyage uh before we do so i wanted to show you i've actually already highlighted this here so this is from uh heart uk uk cholesterol uk the cholesterol charity now this is exactly these are exactly the numbers i was given by my dietitian um i imagine that they're going to vary slightly by different health authorities uh this uh, this is actually a great page it's called how can i eat less fat and um it's it, it, the central part here keep, check the label is so important so as i said i've spent a ton of time over the past month reading nutritional labels in supermarkets my my shop has now start my weekly shop now takes me like an hour instead of 10 minutes because i'm like learning what's low fat by reading a bunch of labels um but i'm getting a lot quicker now so so this is what i've done i've spent so much time reading nutritional labels check the label because as i said you can't rely this is the the thing i find out is you can say oh this is a these, this is a vegan product or this is a vegetarian product or this is labeled as healthy those are just claims the nutritional label is facts so that's why uh, you really have to read them uh, to make sure that you know just don't rely on what's on the box if you're in doubt go ahead and just like look at the back on those labels so um, there are levels of uh, high medium and low fat at least according to heart UK um, and this 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 here these two numbers are the ones that I'm keeping an eye on and that is uh, low fat is considered three grams per 100 grams or less of fat. And for liquids, that's 1.5. So what I've noticed in one month of shopping intensively for low fat food and cooking low fat food and preparing low fat food is that these are low numbers. Now there's one other thing that needs to be said is to state the obvious, if you eat a ton of 2% food, you might get a higher fat overall fat intake than if you ate just, you know, a, tiny sliver of an olive which is a high fat food but uh if you start with low fat foods it's you know kind of common sense that it's gonna uh if you're eating to normal portion size it's gonna just that's gonna give you the best chance of uh eating low fat so the other thing i would say is it's a strict limit you'll see when you go shopping and look at nutrition labels you'll begin to notice how 
relatively few, you really have to go out of your way to find uh, low fat foods in the supermarket, I have found. Um, so they call medium fat is three to 17 and high fat is seven is 17.5 um, grams fat or more. They give you examples from each product. And they also define a uh, fat free uh, as being any food with less than 0 0.5 grams per 100 grams. So 0 0.5 and also 0 0.5 per 100 mils on the in liters for liquids. So uh, the magic number that I'm keeping in my head at all times, that all times are three and 1.5. I'm trying to stick on the right side of those. Um, the one area I have not really succeeded in uh, figuring out a solution yet is uh, cheese. So I've been, the way I've described this is I'm kind of easing into a low fat diet. So I've been eating 5% dairy, even though five is clearly greater than three. Um, I, I have found 0% dairy in like fat free dairy in yogurts. I have not found yet cheeses specifically that are uh, three grams fat per 100 grams or less. I'm sure they exist just in the supermarkets I've been to in Israel, the lowest I've seen is 5%. So that's what I've been buying uh, is 5% is cheese. So um, let us go now on to uh, tesco.ie and I'm gonna just uh, take myself out of the screen here. And let me just show you, give you kind of a whistle, whistle stop tour of what I've been buying so far, simulate, simulating the, super, the glorious uh, experience of shopping in Tesco. So, okay, the first thing I do now when I go to the supermarket is I go to the produce aisle and I stock up on fruit and veg. Now the only one from this list that uh, probably is not uh, low fat is avocados. Avocados are fatty as is well known and you know the information I was given from my dietitian is that it's I'm my instructions are a low fat diet it doesn't does not matter what fat it doesn't matter it's supposedly a healthy fat omega-3s it's low fat period. Uh, so, you know, that's a common thing people say, oh, well, that's good fat. I mean, if, you, if, you're, if you're eating low fat for a health reason like me, because you've had your gallbladder removed and that's created problems, or you've got a liver problem, uh, I think fat is generally what they recommend to cut out in its entirety. So, I mean, I, mean, I, don't, mean in, I don't mean to cut out fat completely, I mean in its entirety as in all varieties of dietary fat. So uh, you can see avocados here, 19.5 grams of fat per 100 grams. So that's way, way, way outside of the low fat territory. So what I tend to buy is my favorite fruits are oranges and apples. And for veg, I buy a lot of cucumbers, tomatoes, because they're great in salads. I buy bell peppers um, and I buy leaf, I buy lettuce and spinach and all that kind of good stuff. So I go there first because the only thing, because it's really easy. Uh, it's the easiest part of the supermarket to shop in for me now because the only things I'm, I'm, I'm avoiding are nuts, seeds, and avocados. I mean, pretty much. So this is an easy part of the supermarket. In the world of dips, dips are good. Dips are good because people like to have dips to snack on. Now, this is um, in Israel. I have not actually found a hummus that is within the low fat territory of, uh, you know, three grams or less, unfortunately. Uh, so a common, a common solution is, well, just make your own food at home and you'll be able to measure the fat precisely. Uh, Tesco stuff actually is um, lower fat than what I can get here, nutritional label. So it's 9.2 grams of fat per 100 grams. So again, it's, it's quite a bit outside of the official low fat. So again, you, you might think, oh, reduced fat, that's, perfect for my low fat diet but read the nutrition label and you'll see that actually it's nine percent fat um so that that this is why reading nutritional labels becomes kind of essential just out of interest let's just check what actual non-reduced fat hummus is it comes in at 16 uh, so it's 16.6 to 9 now in israel and i'm sorry to keep mentioning it's just where i live the unexpected hero has been tomato based sauces. So there's a dish here called matbucha, which is like kind of a, uh, I think it's Tunisian, a kind of spicy tomato dish. Um, and that's actually within my low fat range. I was astounded. I was like, oh great, I just need to eat matbucha now. Um, and because it's not, you know, snacking between meals. So I, I'll do now pita and this dip, this tomato dip. Um, okay, so we're good here as well. So 1.8 grams of fat per 100 grams for this tomato salsa. So again, Low fat's very specific. It's not what you, it, you can't rely on your intuition. So this is low fat, this Tesco mild salsa, which doesn't, it's not emblazoned with uh, low fat or reduced fat, 
This hummus, which is hummus is commonly thought of as a health food and it says reduced fat and it's actually like nine times as much fat. It's 9% fat, even the reduced fat hummus. So again, reading the labels becomes a, a just like really, really essential. Uh, okay, so so far in our virtual shop, we picked up fruit and veg. We've gone for our, uh, we've gone for our tomato dip. Uh, coleslaw, I can tell you now, is probably going to be all problematic unless there's like a really low fat version out there. Um, but I'm just going to try speed through this a little bit quickly because there's just so much to cover here. Um, let's take a look. So I have not found in Israel um, a product like Lolo, uh, for instance. Um, like regular butter is going to be way, way out of low fat territory. It is. 80 grams of fat per 100 grams 80 percent fat so that is but again uh if you have the tiny microscopic amount of butter it would be very little fat but uh it just makes sense to start from low fat i think um so i did find let's take a look at let's scrutinize this product connect gold low fat butter it comes in at 40 grams of fat per 100 grams so again it is lower fat than the 80 percent fat but it's still over 10 times more fat than what's officially considered low fat according to uh the heart uk levels which are similar to many that i've read uh let's see can we find something that actually does fit if in the territory i'm gonna i'm gonna put my money on low 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 good old low low let's check what let's check where Lolo comes in Lolo comes in at 53. I take it back. So I'm not sure we're, this might be, this might be an impossible ask to find something or you might be able to find it. But anyway, I'm just saying, so that this is how careful you have to be. So I haven't bought butter um, basically in like a month. Uh, for breakfast, I'm having, uh, I'll get to that later, but I'm having like skimmed milk and uh bran flakes for lunch i'm having salads and for dinner i'm having like fish or more salad or stuff like that uh lentil lentils indian lentil curries are great dals are brilliant so i haven't had a need for butter is the truth um and i'm getting enough dairy through my low fat cheese low ish fat cheese and my skim milk but um there might be a spread if you look hard enough that will uh, eggs are about six percent i think fat generally so that's tricky as well now within milk, the only one I found, remember, um, I don't know what I've done with this link. Is this it? Nope, that was not the right link. Um, I don't know I don't know what I've done with the Heart UK link, uh, but it, it, 1.5, if you recall, was our, uh, what we wanted for liquids. So let's take a look at this low fat milk. It says Tesco low fat milk, and you might think, oh great, it's gotta be low fat. So yeah, yeah, actually that's pretty, that's on the limit for liquids according to that level of 1.5. Uh, so that's pretty low fat. If you take a, a full fat milk by contrast, this does not have nutritional info. Um, let's find one that does. Let's say Tesco fresh milk, two liters. Also no. Anyway, uh, the lowest one is gonna be skimmed milk or skimmed or skim milk. I think some people call it skim, some people call it skim. That did not work, so let's go for skim. There we go. Skim milk is 0 0.3 grams per 100 grams. So that's the lowest fat option uh, almost always in the milk. Uh, I mean, always in the milk. I don't think you can get lower fat than that. So uh, that's what I've been going for. Now, some people do low fat or excluding dairy. I'm not gonna, I'm just, currently all I'm doing is low fat. So that's what I'm gonna be talking about here. So in cheese, um, cheese is a tricky one. Now, as I said, in Israel, I haven't succeeded in finding less than 5% fat cheese. Um, hard cheese, I don't know if that's the right word for this stuff, let's say cheddar, is I have, this is the only low fat product I've had so far that I've really not enjoyed. Um, I have had low fat cheddar and I thought it was pretty horrible. Uh, your non low fat cheddar tends to come in at like 35 grams fat per 100. So way, way, way beyond low fat territory there. Um, so what I am having instead is a lot of feta cheese. Now, as I said, it's, it's, it's kind of cheating for me because, okay, this is this is higher fat than what I'm eating by a long shot. This is 23 per 100 grams, 23% fat. Um, so I'm actually eating 5% cheese. So uh, I guess there's just lower fat feta here. Um, Israel being a Mediterranean country, there's just a lot of different types of feta cheese in the supermarket. 
Uh, but let's take this lower fat Philadelphia product. This comes in at 11. So again, it says it's light and less 40% less fat, but it's still actually 11% fat, which is quite beyond the 3% mark. Um, so again, uh, you just have to read a lot of nutrition labels. So I, I've, I've been able to find um, Labne, which is like a Middle Eastern um, strained yogurt uh, spread, Labne, uh, Feta, Bulgarit, which is another type of white cheese. I find I have like four or five low, uh, white cheese options and that's basically what I consume in dairy. I um, don't bother buying uh, this kind of dairy anymore just because I don't like the lower fat versions that I've tried. So a better, a more, a more low fat friendly part of the dairy section is gonna be yogurt. So in yogurt I found it's actually really easy to find 0% um, yogurt. Now I, one thing that people criticize low fat diet for is people say, oh, if you just focus on low fat, you're just gonna eat a bunch of, of uh, sugar. So I'm trying not to do that. So um, I'm actually eating just like plain Greek yogurt that is low fat. So if I go like low, um, oh, let's just say 0% fat yogurt, we'll probably find it. Um, so it, these all look like great products. I, uh, fat natural kefir, 350 grams, 0% fat. Kefir is like kind of a fermented product. So it's really healthy for you. So that's great. If I were in Ireland now, uh, you know, that's something I could, um, or you know, if, if you were in Ireland right now, because I'm not, uh, this is something I'd probably, you know, you could add to your shopping cart. Tesco have a zero percent. There's actually abundant options in yogurt. So you kind of learn what's low fat friendly and what's not. So like cheese is really kind of, you have to look out for it. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing. Like I wouldn't typically have yogurt for lunch or lab labna for lunch, but um, I'm finding that a good way to like get, get dairy and get protein. Uh, without getting fat alongside it so it's just all these little adjustments essentially um that you make so i'm eating much more yogurt than i would have done before uh so in terms of meat options i find turkey to be the best just looking at nutritional labels turkey's pretty lean so i've been buying a lot of uh, turkey deli meat and again low fat is not synonymous with healthy so deli meats are very preserved very processed one and whatnot uh but they do tend to be quite low in fat so like these turkey burgers these guys come in at 2.7 grams per 100 grams of fat so that's actually these are actually considered low fat but again look at the i'm just gonna pretty low resolution but there's no hullabaloo here about oh like low fat healthy burgers that just says turkey burgers but these are actually a low fat product and you'll find ones that are emblazoned with low fat reduced fat veggie burgers vegan burgers healthy burgers and you look at the nutrition labels and they're like 15% fat. So you have to be on your guard for this stuff. Um, I think shopping online is probably the easiest way to do this because you can do all this obnoxious nutritional label reading at home. Um, or you can just learn what product, you can just learn what products are actually low fat and just like pick them up when you're in your supermarket. So uh, let us look at, do, 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 do. So we're, we've done so far fruit and veg, a dip, We've got yogurt, we've got white cheese, we've got skim milk here, um, we've got turkey, and in terms of fish, so I found, uh, yeah, white fish, cod haddock and white fish, that's kind of where you want to be going for in terms of low fat. Uh, let's look at these fresh hake fillets, for instance, and these guys will be coming in at 1.9 grams per 100 grams of fat, so that's low fat. Uh, so I'm often eating fish for dinner now, you just have to be careful not to cover your fish in a high fat like sauce or whatever um you have to really scrutinize each each component of a meal but it can be done um so yeah that's kind of my go-to now in terms of fish in terms of um uh not fresh fish it's tuna in water is my go-to at the moment so i think let's just wrap up here because there's certain things pasta is great generally um you know it, it's obviously a carbohydrate but uh, so long as this might be problematic because it's ricotta tortellini, it could be filled with high fat cheese. This 3.3 is actually also not so bad because it's, it's also got spinach in there. So um, yeah, it just kind of, sli that's slightly at a, the low fat 3% level, but only by a fraction. Um, so yeah, stuff like penny. So I've really stocked up on pasta and I'll put stuff like uh, tuna preserved in water into it, um, along with like lentils and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that is generally also, um, also good. 
So let's just go skip ahead a little bit and jump into, jump into, not literally jump into, but uh, look at the food cupboard. So my friend in the world of tin fish is tuna in, uh, in, in brine specifically. Now, if you look at the um, difference between tuna preserved in water or brine, which is salty water, and tuna preserved in oil, it's quite drastic. Um, so I always bought tuna in oil and now I do the exact opposite and I always buy tuna in water. Tuna in brine is, um, comes in at one gram of fat, so 1% fat per 100. So very lean, tuna is a lean fish, uh, but it depends how you preserve it. So that's, this is my go-to in the canned fish aisle. Needless to say, tuna, mercury, you don't want to be eating tuna morning, noon and night, but uh, I have found it um, you know, very good. Um, to contrast with sardines and sunflower oil are probably quite a bit fattier. So yes, it is. It's a wow, 14% fat because we're starting with an oily fish. Sardines, I believe, are oily and we're preserving them in an oil. So there's a huge difference between 1% fat and 14% fat. There's a 14 times difference. So that's why you just kind of like learn, you learn how to navigate the supermarket as a low fat eater. Um, what else can I talk about? I'm getting a bit worn out. Oh yeah, so, okay. Another great thing to do is buy uh, grains and legumes. So stuff like lentils, couscous, chickpeas, tuna. Sorry, tuna, what's wrong with me? I, um, um, you know, uh, grains. The one thing that's surprising, the relatively high fat is actually oatmeal. You'd never believe, but oatmeal is a higher percentage fat than quite a few other grains. So. For breakfast, if I'm doing a porridge, I'm actually not doing oatmeal as my porridge. I'm doing rice porridges and I'm doing bulgur porridges. Bulgur is parboiled um, uh, cracked wheat and it's actually lower in fat than oatmeal. So these are little things, again, I never knew about before I started doing this. Um, biscuits are probably a write-off, but uh, you, know, you know, you might find something in the healthy biscuits section or, you know, or, the, or the healthy crisp section even uh this but this is still you know 11 grams of fat here so you don't need these things in your diet they're probably just like empty carbohydrates so i'm you know i instead of snacking on biscuits i, I might be snacking now on a, on a bit of zero percent yogurt so it's changed in terms of condiments um this is a tricky area so mayonnaise unfortunately i've had a really hard time finding stuff that's actually low fat uh, even the like lower fat mayonnaise or what they call lower fat mayonnaise is really high in fat. So um, that's what I have encountered anyway. And I really struggle to find, I actually haven't found anything that's um, in the low fat, ter in the in that 3% or lower territory. So that, wow, 79 grams of fat per 100 grams. So again, all these things I would do before, like have a tuna sandwich smothered in mayonnaise, um, adding tons of fat to the meal. Uh, now I am proceeding quite differently. So here, now, th this might be a good example of why reading nutrition labels matters. Hellman's light mayonnaise. Oh, it's gotta be low fat. It's, it says light on the box, but uh, where does this come in at? 26 grams per 100 grams. So a lot lower than the regular, but still quite high in fat actually. So uh, what I found in Israel is that we have a few mustards that are actually low fat. Um, and that's kind of be my go-to. So I'll do I'll do stuff like put mustard in a turkey sandwich, or I'll put mustard in, uh, yeah, mostly just in turkey sandwiches, that kind of thing. Now the ones I found in Tesco actually were not really low fat, or not low fat at all. So this mustard is twelve percent fat, twelve grams fat per one hundred grams. I uh, I don't know. I guess the the mustards Tesco are selling are not just not that low fat. Uh, but I have found ones here where I'm based that actually are low fat. So. Probably other things, ketchup for instance. Again, you don't want to cut out fat just to like load up on sugar. And besides that fat, ketchup doesn't really go with many things. Um, ketchup comes in at 0 0.1 grams of fat per 100 grams. So almost essentially fat free. Um, so that's kind of one that you have there as an option. So if you were to have something like a cod burger, like a, you know, a very lean burger in a burger bun, and you put a little bit of ketchup on it for flavoring that's probably still going to come in pretty low fat um so again these are just things you learn as you as, as you go along um and again i'm not a nutritionist i'm not a dietitian i'm just passing on uh I'm kind of one month worth of going to the supermarket literally four times per week i don't even exaggerate 
studying all the nutrition labels and figuring out what he can eat and what he cannot eat. So I think we've covered um, kind of like everything I want to cover. Uh, and after one month, this is just like, you know, I'm only kind of scratching the surface. I'm sure what, I'm sure there's other things I can eat that I haven't really discovered yet in the crisp section. So they've got healthier crisps here. Uh, so yeah, I actually did find a low fat crisps where I'm based. Uh, I'm just curious, this Walker's baked says 50% less fat, salt and vinegar. Sounds good so far, but does it pass the litmus test of the nutrition label? It does not. It is 13.4 uh, grams of fat per 100 grams. So it's 13. So even though the, you know, per serving per pack, it's only 3.4 grams of fat. But if you're really, really trying to cut down on that fat and keep that number as low as possible, then these are outside of that 3% limit. So um, that's kind of what I found so far and that's kind of how I'm structuring my shopping to just quickly quickly uh, do a do a replay here eating a lot of fruit a lot of produce I mean I'm skim milk um, white cheeses I'm finding some five percent stuff not lower than that yet uh, yogurt I'm having a lot of success in the yogurt uh, department and uh, you know that's a good one for me as is Labana which is a yogurt based spread if you can find it in your in a Middle East supermarket that tends to be you'll find uh, low fat Labana somewhat easily um, and then turkey is kind of my go to meat or uh, chicken breast no dark no dark meats um, and definitely I haven't had beef since I've started this um, it will be a special occasion thing but day to day no um, in terms of fish white fish is great they all tend to be very low fat in terms of canned fish it's tuna for me pasta grains and beans are go-to's so i I'm, in terms of pantry foods always having those stocked up uh pasta um pizza no i've not found any pizzas that are actually low fat and then in terms, in terms of the food food cupboard uh there's probably more stuff i could be having that i'm not i've never really had stuff like uh dried fruits before it might be low fat um uh, couscous and all that as i mentioned and in terms of condiments, it's been a little bit tricky. Basically, I find any way you can add flavor that doesn't involve adding fat is a winning strategy. So I've stocked, stocked up on, uh, you know, spice mixes and stuff like that. And uh, trying not to obviously also overuse salt, but like spice mixes and um, putting that in place of fat. And I've also just bought an air fryer. So I'm hoping that that is going to be another another weapon in the low fat arsenal here so i think that's enough uh, that's kind of where i am at the moment in terms of my low fat chopping and uh you know as i said before in about six months i'd like to do another one of these where hopefully i will have figured out more options um and again this is not nutrition advice not dietary advice it's just my current methodology for low fat chopping at the supermarket